Ladies and gentlemen, today is February 23rd, 2016, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 282, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial on design and creation of League of Legends skins, starring none other than Ramus and Skarnier, or Skarn Skarn, as we all know and love him as. But before we get into that actual tutorial, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane. So let's go ahead and get to that because you guys have been being awesome and submitting this amazing art. Thank you guys so much for liking the page. By the way, if you want to go see all these for yourself, just type in that tiny URL slash fanart. Like the page, submit some art. That could be you. Scrolling past right there. That could be you. And uh, really great submissions this, this week, guys. Actually, technically it's over two weeks because we took a little break. Took a little break, but regardless, if you want to go see them, Go check them all out there, and thank you for submitting as always. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into what we're talking about today. I mean, we got a lot. We got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover, and we're gonna start with Ramus, okay? So I'm gonna kick back, I'm gonna pull out my, whip out my stylus, and we're gonna talk about some notes, okay? Because many of you guys know that these are, this is from League of Legends, for those of you who don't know what this is, League of Legends. This is a character called Ramus, which is a turtle character. And in this skin, I was uh, given the task of turning him into almost like a desert beetle, a scarab type thing. And you look at this and you're like, wow, that's such a great concept, Kenan. One day I hope to be just as amazing as you. How can I do that? And you're lucky. You're lucky that you tuned into the right place today because I'm gonna show you exactly how we got to that point. And that is, Right here, with some good old reference, sent, uh, this is also compiled, this is compiled by me and other people at the office who sent me the initial assignment, right? So let's take a look at this. And this leads into my first point that we're gonna talk about today. And that is uh, references, references, and why they are so important, and why so many people have fallen away from the proper way to use references, and people have attached these terrible stigmas, thinking that they're copying, and that references are just bad and that they should know how to draw everything out of their head, which is absolutely wrong. And, uh, but I am guilty of this. I am guilty of thinking that I need to come up with everything on my own, uh, as well. Right. But the real, the realistic thing or the real, the pragmatic thought process that you want to think of with this is that references are like, everybody's idea was already inspired by somebody else already, or is inspired by nature, inspired by something like you can't come up with something that is literally completely new. Like you have to have seen something at one point or um, you know what I mean? It's like everything is inspired by everything else. So let's drop the stigma about references and let's talk about them. Let's talk about references and how to get started, how to get started because you look at this here, right? And it's like, oh wow, that's, that's cool. I might have an idea, something like this. Like I wanna get to this point. I wanna get to this point, but how do I get started? How do I get started? I pull up, okay, well, I spent an hour looking on Google and I got all these images, but now what do I do? Now what do I do? I don't know, I'm, I'm getting stuck, right? So this is how you get started with concepting. And I personally like to, do I have a sketchbook here? Uh, oh yeah, sure. All right, so here's an example, here's a sketchbook. I mean, this is obviously not Sharima Ramis, but I whip out my sketchbook and I start drawing with pen and, or. Actually, yeah, pen and paper. These ones are, you know, like pencil drawings, but you know, see, I like to get ideas down. I like to get like shapes down. And I find that it's a lot easier to experiment with shapes while you're in this phase, while you're in the sketchbook phase. So I highly recommend that. But let's go ahead and jump back to this. So these are scans of the original sketches that I was doing for Ramis. So really what I'm looking for here, uh, I've taught you guys many times about the design principle 101, the thing that should always be in the back of your mind when you're drawing, and that is your philosophy with design. And we know what that is, right? But just in case you missed out, it's medium, small, and large. And what this represents here is three main, um, like the thing that you always wanna be thinking about in your head, and that is, is there a good balance? Is there a good balance in these pictures here? Let me go ahead and Pull this out so we can go ahead and let's uh, examine. Let's examine one of these things. So small, medium, large, you're like, what the heck are you talking about? All right, here we go. So here's what I'm talking about. It's all about balance, 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 balance. You wanna be asking yourself, is there a good amount of medium shapes in this piece or in this design? You know, this could be considered a medium uh, shape. And then you have really small, intricate designs like the little uh, kind of cracks or the little spaces between 
uh, these shell pieces, right? And these, this is also like another medium space, you could say, but these qualify as small spaces, small spaces, little things that just break up the monotony. And then you wanna also have a really big part that I think a lot of people forget, large spaces, large, large spaces. And this is what I'm always thinking about whenever I design things. Whenever I'm just laying down uh, shapes, um, even if it's just kind of haphazardly and just kind of crazy, like say I start with like this triangle thing and then I build something off of that, right? It's like, hey, all right, this is already an interesting design, right? See right here. This design right here, this is already interesting. And you wanna know why? It's because those same principles apply, right? You got your medium shapes here. Small can be technically like the inside and then you got large, large. So this is the one that most people forget. They always forget about having those nice large areas. We call this areas of rest. And a good example of this is uh, for those of you who watch any sort of anime with giant robots. You know, you ask yourself, well, how the heck do they animate those, those crazy like detailed robots? And it's interesting, if you look at the designs, they have a lot of like little small working parts or little gears or just the uh, just the robotic parts inside, but then they have these large plates that cover it most of the time. And it is laid out in such a way that it is balanced. It's balanced and it's pleasing to the eye. Oh yeah, and I forgot to tell you why this, why do we like small, medium, large? Why do we like that so much? Well, the reason we like it is because it's found in nature, flowers and crap like that. So don't forget it, don't forget it. So take a look at these other designs and let me ask you, can you find the smalls, the mediums, and the larges in here. Can you find those? And really all I'm doing here is I'm drawing this character from a bunch of different angles. I'm just starting with a shape and then I'm saying, okay, well maybe this could be like the top. Maybe this could be like his shell. Maybe this is the shell. And then his wings come out like this. But uh, I'm kind of starting with shapes first and then just building off of that later. You wanna think of this as like the major brainstorming stage. This is where you just wanna get all of your ideas out. See, this one started, usually, and it starts with one shape. I'm like, okay, well, let's build off of a circle in this one. Maybe I'll just do like something like that. And then the shell can come back like this, and then the wing, you know? And then small little things, just getting all your ideas out. That's the most important thing. All right, all right. Different ideas for like plating, maybe you can go like up as opposed to, you know, back. Like, instead of the plates going this way, maybe they'll go this way, you know? So just get all your ideas out. Little designs, little designs. Okay, next thing. So that was the first thing. That was the first thing. Oh, and here's a good example of when my reference came to the rescue. My reference came to the rescue. And what little things can really do to get you started. Now, um, let's see here. So check this out. This is a space pirate from Metroid Prime, I believe. Those of you who played it, then you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't played it, I pity you because that is an amazing game. So anyway. Uh, but check this out. So see this little triangle and then it goes back into this neck piece and then this plate that covers it right here. Isn't that interesting? Do you notice how that very shape right there inspired the rest of the piece? Because if you look at the final Ramus, a very similar thing is happening here. A very, very similar thing is happening. We've got the head plate, almost like a triangle shape. Now we've got the opening and then the shell that covers it. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get inspired and pull different design elements that can eventually just um, become your entire design or can uh, furnish, not fur furnish and fuel you to your final design. All right, so let's talk about where we went from there. So I saw that triangle head shape and then I drew this. I drew this and I really, really liked this. I was like, hmm, I think we're onto something with this. We're gonna continue in this route. Okay, move on to phase two. Phase two. So hey, check it out. Do you see something familiar here? Yes, it is the triangle head shape. Triangle head shape and the plate that covers it. And then I said, okay, well, if we're gonna be doing a beetle back, let's just start with, you know, the simple kind of rounded back. And then I thought, well, he's like a desert themed type of character. So what if these spikes on his back, because Ramus has spikes, what if we just turn those into pyramids? And then what if those pyramids had like little holes in them, right? That like let out these locusts, like this locust swarm, because he has like a big ability that just like surrounds the area around him. Maybe that could be like part of it, you know? So just kind of riffing off of those ideas. Now that I have something that I like, just kind of building off of that. And here are some more ideas. Um, just playing around with our shapes again. Never forget about our small, medium, large. Never forget about the small, medium, large. Okay. 
building off those shapes, trying to draw it also in perspective, getting a heads up on our isometric views. Because remember, you can make something look as cool as you want here in this stage, but if it doesn't translate to your isometric view or the in-game view, then you have a problem. You have to make sure that the skin is really designed for that angle. However, in the design stage, I really like to do stuff like this, where I draw it from the side. Even though you'll never really technically see it from this angle in the game, it's just really nice for getting ideas. It's good for getting ideas and getting um, those balances down to small, medium, large. And also, hey, wings. All right, we love that stuff. And oh, and of course, the Powerball, gotta love that. This one actually came really naturally. Like I just drew the Powerball and I was like, okay, it should have like these spikes or it should be like this and then the wings will come out the side. It was like really easy. I think that was the first one I drew, ended up going right with that one. So sometimes you will get your concepts, you know, dead on the first time. You will get them dead on the first time sometimes. And uh, in those cases, you just don't, don't really ask questions, you know, just roll with it, just roll with it. All right, so now we're getting closer from where we were on the last one. So I think that I really liked this one up here in the top left. So I decided to kind of play around with these a little bit more. Moving on into number three. Number three, past number three, you can see we're doing more isometric stuff. We really wanna get this figured out, especially from like the back view, right? I was like, okay, so he's got this shell. Now how is his head gonna look like coming out of there? How is that gonna balance and, and look uh, from in game? And then like the spikes, how are those gonna look? How are they actually going to be laid in on the shell, right? Because the problem that I was having was, okay, he's got these spikes here, uh, but the shell needs to be divided in two, right? So that way it can open up and let his wings out. So I was trying to figure out how we're gonna divide the shell. Like maybe there's like a crack here and then it kind of comes down there and it goes all the way down. You know, but uh, for the most part I was, oh, oh yeah, and I'm trying to illustrate that here. It's like, okay, so where do the spikes go when these wings open up and where do the wings come from? And what does it look like underneath? You know, all these things are very important to give to your modeler because if you just give them this, then that doesn't really, there's a lot of questions that are unanswered. And that is like, how does this look like from the top? Like, what's the depth of this shell? Like, how wide is it? Um, what does it look like from this angle, you know? So you really, that's probably the biggest thing that you should be keeping in mind as you are concepting skins. Um, and it's a very desirable trait, I will say, in a lot of concept artists that we rarely see is because you get a lot of concept artists that can do stuff like this. But then you say, okay, cool, I like that idea. Can you show me more how it would look like in game, can you show me how it would look like from an isometric view? And they'll be like, oh yeah, totally. And then they draw it from like the in game thing. And it, you know, it looks like, it looks like this. They're like, okay, well here's the shell. Yeah, it's like that. And then his head is like that. And then he's got like these legs and then it just looks really bad. Like you actually raise more questions than you answered. If you don't know how to do isometric views. So remember that, remember that. Practice your isometrics. Price, pra bleh, practice your speaking and your isometrics. Moving on. All right, so we got to where we liked with our geometry. You wanna think about it as, okay, so we've got shapes here. We've got shapes that we like. But now, let's play around with texture. Let's play around with trim. Let's play around with design on top of those shapes. On top of those shapes. So that's what we're doing, moving into this next one. Moving into this next one. Playing around with color. Playing around with, do we want golden trim? Do we want something more like this? Am I on the right layer? Yes, I am, because I'm awesome. All right, do we want something like this? All right, golden trim. Golden trim going around here. Little, like, what's the treatment of these spikes? Are they like an obsidian, uh, kind of like a black stone, or are they more organic? Do they grow right out of the shell? And in this case, these are like more like magical rubies. Maybe these things embedded in the shell are what turned Ramus into a beetle in the first place. You wanna think about stuff like that. Think about story. Think about why is this character the way that it is? Why is it that way and why should I care, right? And then, so you can see here, this is more of an organic treatment where he is the beetle. And then over here, you have a treatment where it's like, this is beetle armor on top of regular Ramus. You can see his little face under there. And I guess he, he would have an eye poking out there, but I didn't draw it. I don't know, I guess I was just rushed for time or I just forgot that he had eyes, but regardless. So yeah, different things. I don't know exactly how his arm would fit in there, but uh, yeah, we won't go into that. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> moving on. So really just condensing, right? We've got our idea, now we're really trying to hone it in, trying to figure out what we want, okay? And moving on to the next thing. 
So this is about the point where we really started to get somewhere. We're like, yes, this feels really good. I love the balance that's happening here. But I do want to tell you guys about something very important, right? Because you might look at all these and you'd be like, wow, Kim must have done these over the course of a few hours, maybe 20 minutes. But um, I, I, as much as I wish I could work that fast, these were done over days. These were done over days. And I actually took a major break between here and here, uh, probably over the course of a couple days because I think at the time I was taking a trip out to the studio because I work remotely from here in Utah, took a, a trip out to the studio. And during that time, it was about two days, had time to think about it. And I had a chance to meet with my coworker, Michael Marino, who many of you know as Iron Stylist. And I talked to him about this design. I said, I said, Marino, I feel like I'm having some issues. I feel like I'm having some issues with getting this design. I can't make it look right. It looks okay, but it doesn't look like really cool, right? And Marino is an amazing designer. He's the person that even taught me about the small, medium, large technique in the first place. Totally revolutionized everything. Actually, wait a minute. Oh shoot, I forgot how long ago this was. I think that this right here, when I did this concept, was exactly when Marino taught me that pro uh, that uh, yeah that prospect, not that prospect, that principle, principle. He taught me that principle. And <laughs> so he taught me about small, medium, large. And then I went in there, I was like, oh, I get it, I get it. So I should have these large shapes. And then oftentimes, I'm gonna give you guys a little hint right here. Oftentimes your small shape can be taken care of by doing trims. Trim. See all these little intricate details in here? These occupy what we know as the small spaces. Small spaces, small details, right? And then, but overall, it's placed on a large shape, large shape. And we have areas of rest. Uh, this is technically a nice area of rest right here in the middle of the, this right here. And you have another little area of rest right there. So yeah, just keeping that in mind. And I can't believe, like, this is from so long ago. I think this is almost three years old. Does it have a, I don't know if it has a date on this, but yeah, this is over probably about three years ago when I learned this principle. And after Marino blessed me with those amazing words, everything changed from that point. We went from this over here on the left uh, over to this one on the right. Oh, also he taught me the importance of um, coloring or not coloring, but concepting in value, in value. Because up till then, I think I was doing a lot of my concepting like this, where I was going in there and I was drawing lines. I was drawing lines and trying to like figure out my concepts like that. I was trying to draw it into place. Whereas in this case, this is kind of moving more into that line sculpting type of thing that I talked to you guys about. And just as an example, here's what I'm talking about. So instead of concepting with line, where I draw a man like this, all right, here, let me go ahead and grab this. So this will sum it up. So instead of drawing a man like this, right? He's got like some spiky hair. And then he's got like this armor plating. Instead of doing this amazing stuff, right? Because see how like counterintuitive that is? It's kind of hard to like figure that out. Really, the better thing to do is let's say, okay, let's draw the silhouette of a man. Let's draw the silhouette of the man and the plate and all that stuff and the hair. And let's just get that in place. And then off of that, let's begin to cut back in with our values. Let's cut back in with our values. So let's say like, here's his face. Here is the plate here. Here's like some designs. And this is really where it comes in handy because you can do stuff like this. You can start adding in little details and just seeing how it feels, seeing how it feels. You can play around with this. Maybe he has like a spiky pauldron, you know, just add stuff to it as opposed to drawing with lines and concepting with lines. This is probably one of the most important things that I could teach you guys today. So I hope you're paying attention. The most important thing, most important thing is learning to sculpt lines, paint with lines, paint with values first, paint with values. And you kind of do one of these things like the easy uh, face, just give him some sunglasses and a nose, right? There you go, sunglasses and a nose, but it reads as like a shadow, <laughs> reads as a shadow. So this is kind of a nice way to just get started. Get lines on the page because you and I both know that's the hardest part. The hardest part is getting started, putting that first line on the page. But once you start to do this, it becomes a little bit more of a malleable subject. It's a more malleable, um, uh, 
drawing. And because of that, it's so much easier to come up with ideas. So much easier to come up with ideas. You can draw that in, basically cut out, cut out and put stuff back in. And then look at that, you're already coming up with cool designs because of the awesome small, medium, large technique that I shot, uh, that I taught you, that I shot you. <laughs> I shot your way today. There you go, cool. So that is rendering and designing with value. All righty, moving on to the next one. And just in case you're wondering, Skarner will go much quicker because this is, uh, Ramus was the first one that I did and there was a lot of like learning uh, going on in this one. Whereas with Skarner, it was much easier because we already had like a motif set up, which is basically a design style or like shapes that we liked that I could carry over to Skarner. And uh, also I was taught the amazing small, medium, large technique. So that was really easy. All right, so take a look. We I drew this here. And this was actually a point where I designed from the isometric view. I designed this from the isometric view and I said, hey, you know what, I like that. I really like what's going on here. So let's go ahead and take that over. Let's take that over. Let's grab the right brushes. Let's take that over and let's actually design that. Let's design that from the side view. Let's really figure out like, what is the shell? What is the shell? How does it lay in with this headpiece? How does it layer? What's going on with Ramus's head? Can you see his eye or not? Luckily you can. Luckily you can. So really just figuring all that stuff out, drawing the back, really important, get that back in and see, look, we figured out how the shell would separate and where the spike would go. Just goes right in between there, shell comes down, loving it, loving it. And then we go to our favorite part. Favorite part, put it all together, setting it up and sending it off, right? That's the most important. It's the most important part when we're done. We are done, son. So we got this stuff done here. We got that back done. Uh, and also we showed the wings. Uh, we were originally playing around with the idea of having the stones kind of light up, like maybe they were the source of magic for him. Eventually ended up ditching that. But, uh, oh, let me show you a couple things here. So there's a couple key differences here. This is what I will label as final touches, final touches. So I'll go ahead and just turn this on and off. You guys can see what I added here. So there's a couple changes that I made to his shell. If you guys direct your attention over to the right on these things, take a look at what's happening there. We're shortening down the horn, kind of changing up a little bit of the gold on the back of the shell, giving it a little bit more of that blue to show through, getting a little bit more blue to show through, uh, kind of toning down the gold allowing our large pieces, our large blue pieces to be a little bit larger, a little bit larger, balances the piece out. Because before there's kind of like the blue and the gold are kind of competing. There's no particular one that is the dominant uh, material or the dominant color. So you can see now it's like, oh, okay, the blue is dominant and now the gold really represents our smaller pieces, smaller, smaller pieces. So, and of course, throw in the ball, throw the ball in and you're good to go. All right. So I hope I helped you guys out. I hope that was a good story. We're gonna go ahead and move into Skarner. Move into Skarner and he will go a little bit much faster because like I said, a lot of those problems were figured out and it's gonna make our life so much easier with Skarner. All right, so take a look over here. Here's our references. Here are our references. I'm sure you'll be able to see some things that we're gonna be using here, i.e. this really cool scorpion thing with pincers on the back. Gotta love that. That is freaky as heck. If I ever saw one of those, ooh. Oh man, I don't know where those exist, but I don't want to go there. Anyway, so, uh, and we got this guy here, which is like a scorpion dude. I actually wanted to push more so for this type of thing, like Skarner, where he's more like got a kind of human body on him, as you can see right here. Oh, but before we get into that, let's talk about the design phase. Hey, this is going to be super fun. So I remember what I was talking to you guys about before, where saying, hey, let's get started with this. Let's move on over to our sketchbook and let's start playing around with shapes. Play around with shapes. Maybe there's like a, I started this one with like a teardrop and then I built off of that. See, keep in mind our small, medium, larges. Can you see them? I sure hope you can. But really what uh, helped us out a lot here was this design, this design up here. Because this is actually going to translate, if you look closely, this is gonna translate to Skarner's body. So these plates right here are gonna go on his back. This is technically where his tail comes out of. And then his head, if I were to draw his head, would be right around here. See, I'll give him little bug eyes so you can see where he would go. And then out here, 
You got these little things. And then his claws would come out like this. So see, you can build off of that. You can build off of that. And it's, it really is up to your interpretation. Oh, and these over here, I really liked this one. I thought this was like super cool. Not really like Skarner, but I really liked that sketch. That was really fun. But yeah, also just playing around with shapes, playing around with shapes, all this stuff. See, there's that one where he's like kind of like more up, uh, standing more upright, more uh, shape studies. And these can really be anything. This could be like his tail coming up, right? This could be the tail of Skarner. And then his head is like down here. See what I'm talking about? So it's really all about coming up with cool shapes, cool designs at the beginning. Let's move on. Let us move on. All right, so see what I'm doing here? I'm taking that shape, taking this design right here, and I'm moving it onto his back. I'm translating it now to his back. So if you can see here, remember, those were the plates right there. And then there was that little thing right there, there. Are you seeing that design now? I just took that and I laid it down. Took that design, laid it down, made it look awesome. So that was our base. And now off of that, now off of that, I am now going to begin laying it, changing up those shapes, using the same base like geometry, if you will. And then just kind of creating designs off of that, creating designs off of that using our small, medium, large, using our small, medium, large. I really liked this one. I wanted this one so Oh, badly, but unfortunately it didn't go through. Probably because they would have had to create a whole new rig for him, right, where it actually has like an opposable back or whatever. Would have been a real pain in the arse to do, but uh, eventually we ended up going with this one because this was a, it was a good middle ground, had those really nice shapes, had a really good, um, kind of like that Sharima Egyptian feel. And so we ended up going forward with that one. All right, so similar to what we did with Ramus, now we're gonna be doing some color comps, color things, figuring out well, what color do we want the jewels to glow or what, uh, what are the values of this piece? Do we want more of that blue and gold similar to Ramus or do we want more of like an obsidian shell, a dark black shell? And uh, yeah, just figuring that out. I think we eventually ended up going with B and then we move into the final bit. This is quite a bit different or, uh, a little bit different than what ended up going into the final game. I think they ended up playing up, up a lot more the gold. They made it brighter. And I understand why they did that. Uh, because if you look at this, if you look at this, you have some nice values. You have nice values here, but they're all kind of dark, especially like in here. So you have a dark black, and then you have like this dark gold, right? There's no real, there's not enough contrast. And on the map, I could see how he would blend in a little bit. He would blend in just a tad bit. So. I was all for the final changes that they made on it, but that is how Shreemus Garner came to being in existence in the League of Legends. Yes. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope that helps you guys out a little bit. Hope you guys had some fun looking at those designs. And uh, yeah, with that, we're gonna end it. Before we go, I wanna say thank you to my amazing sponsors, Laura Bashir, David Chiariello, and of course, Captain Big Butt. Thank you to my amazing sponsors. These are my sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to sponsor the show, if you'd like to sponsor the show, you can do it there. Uh, and of course, thank you to my sponsors of the past. Thank you to my sponsors of the past. Um, if you would like to sponsor on Patreon, <clears throat> then just go ahead and clear your throat. And then you can uh, click on this picture right here because I will be releasing this PSD if you want to take a look at all these sketches for yourself, both for Scarnier and Ramus and Ramus. So yeah, just click this picture if you want to go to Patreon, download not only this PSD, but all the other PSDs of the past, get cool stuff, support the show, and of course, I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. You guys are so awesome. Um, yeah, and with that, we're going to go ahead and end it. So, you guys have a great rest of your week. I will see you next Tuesday for another tutorial, and until then, you guys take care. See ya.